hello viewers i am dr luna monidas and today i'm going to tell you about the elements of visual image interpretation so let's first understand what is visual image interpretation it is basically the extraction of information about an object by analyzing the light rays reaching our eyes after having some optical reaction with that object in visual image interpretation we try to process or identify features seen on the images such as satellite imagery aerial photograph and also this is the process of extracting information obtained from these images by an analyst or an interpreter and this is very much dependent on the experience and quality of the interpreter now come to the elements of the visual image interpretation this is the list of elements that we are going to discuss and this there are nine total elements as we move down the degree of complexity of the element increases whereas the initial ones are known as the basic elements the medium the middle ones are known as the secondary element and tertiary element and the final the last ones are known as the complex elements if we focus on the list here the list the element of the image interpretation starts with the information of location and scale tone or color of the image size shape texture shadow or height pattern association and sight and situations let us see all this element one by one coming to location along with location we get one other important factor which is called the scale so in any of the imagery when we collect it from any source uh, the source here produces or gives us information about the location and the scale of the imagery location is given with respect to the xy coordinate that is the information of latitude and longitude extension or the information of easting and northing with respect to grids here you can see here uh, is a google earth imagery and here there are some information about the latitude on longitudinal extension on the other hand you can see the same imagery we can have information about the location in grid pattern and in each of this grid we have information about the latitudes and the longitude you can see here it is northing and it is easting okay and in both of this um, imagery you can see there is a scale given along with the information of latitudes and longitudes these are the fundamental characteristics of the imagery and uh, with this information we try to interpret it and our interpretation process begin with the analysis of these two fundamental uh, elements then coming to the information basically scale is very important because whatever features that are present in the imagery will depend on the scale of the imagery uh, we will understand it in the later course of this presentation both of this information are basically given by the source of the imagery wherever uh, from whichever source we have collected the imagery it will provide us with this information of uh, location and scale as well as northing uh, easting it can be in the grids or in as information of uh, x and y coordinate so this is be attached with the metadata of the imagery then coming to the tone or color as you can see in the given uh, imagery i have shown you different types of imagery and you can see in all of this there is some there is a variation in the sh uh, shades of color and this variation or relative variation of the shades of color in color pho photographs 
or imageries. Uh, you can say the brightness of the color in the colored imagery and the relative variation of shades of gray in black and white imagery. Here you can see this is a black and white imagery and there are different shades of gray. So this is also um, called as the tone of the imagery. Here you can see there is green and there are other grayish patches. So here you can see there is a variation of color similarly here also this is an FCC and here also there is a variation of the color. So this variation in the shades of color uh, is used for understanding the getting the information of the terrain and uh, this is basically occurring due to the variation of interaction of different objects with the uh, electromagnetic radiation involving reflection absorption transmission etc so this variation are basically due to this variation in the interaction of uh, light rays or you can say electromagnetic radiation of the objects that are available on the ground surface. These are also known as the basic element of image interpretation. Coming to the next element, it is the size. Uh, size basically represents, represents how big an object is. Obviously, in an imagery, the size is a, a function of the scale of the imagery. Uh, it will be depending on the scale of the imagery, but whatever uh, different features are there in the same imagery can be compared with one another. For example, uh, here we will try to compare the areas, the length that are occupied by different objects in the imagery. You can see here is an imagery and here I am uh, showing you two uh, water bodies. Here is one water body and here is the another one. Okay. So this one is a bigger water body, you can see this and here is a smaller one here. So when I am saying a bigger and a smaller one, I am basically referring to the size of this uh, both water bodies. And as you can see, this uh, both of these water bodies are represented in a single um, imagery with a single scale. So we can compare their size. Different objects on the imaginary have different size and this basically uh, tells us about the area and the length of the object that it's occupying in the imaginary. It is a measurable qu uh, quantity and it is very much dependent on the scale. Coming to the next characteristics or element, here is it is the shape shape is basically the general form of the outline of the object or the configuration of object on the imagery. Um, coming to these photographs again, these are satellite imageries. You can see there is the same uh, water body that was shown in the previous imagery. Here is the um, outline of the, of the water body and it represents a random shape, okay. In this one, you can see there is another water body but it is having a distinct shape and it is a square. So these are basically the general form that an object have or occur in the imagery is called as the shape. There are different types of shapes and uh, this difference in the shape is basically due to the difference in the shape of the objects on the surface of the earth. There, they can be linear such as road and railways, irregular such as forested areas, square, rectangular such as fields or settlements. So there can be man, many other shapes. But it is in general believed that the geometrical shapes are indicative of man-made objects. So since this object is or this water body is a square shaped water body then we can just interpret this as a, a man creation. Whereas this water body you can see there is many a fluctuation in the outline and it is not at all a geometrical shape. It is a regular shape so it is an indicative of a natural 
object coming to the next element and it is the texture it is basically the measurement of roughness or smoothness of a color or text texture in the imagery so here you can see there are there is different color but the different colors they have different texture here you can see it is smooth whereas here it is coarse then here you have some uh, particular type of uh, coarseness here also there is coarse and here it is smooth so this basically represent the texture of the imagery uh, smoothness basically here you can see this smoothness is an indicative of homogeneity again the roughness here you can see there is very rough um, shade of the color and it is indicative of heterogeneity the expression of roughness can be a ripple molten coarse moderate very fine fine and smooth so there can be many expressions for texture Generally, it is believed that the water bodies and the grass cover have smooth texture, whereas forest with multiple canopy has a rough texture. Here you can see this is basically uh, showing a river. Here also, it is a tributary and it is the main river. Even here, it is the main river, and there you can see the uh, texture is smooth here even here but coming to the other hand that is this area it is a forest cover area it has a, a rough texture whereas this area you can see it is um, maybe a playground and here there is a grass cover and it is smooth okay so basically these are some features which uh, which are having smooth textures uh, whereas there are other features which have rough texture so we can identify the features based on their textures coming to the next pattern uh, it is the pattern it is basically representing the spatial arrangement of object on the surface of the earth there is a distinct pattern there is a distinct relative order of a spatial arrangement of different object on the ground now here you can see in this imagery there is a something is there which is uh, having a pattern and it is called as meandering pattern okay so here this meandering pattern basically uh, is indicative that this is obviously not a nature uh, man-made feature this is a natural element or natural feature and since it is having a meandering um, pattern we can just um, go to uh, recall our knowledge and we will find this that this is this has the probability that this uh, feature is basically a river okay now coming to this one here also there is a pattern some uh, kind of you know a linear arrangement is there and from observation of this element we can just identify this as a uh, that this area may be a hilly area with uh, you know uh, sy symmetrical or asymmetrical sometime uh, co convergence and divergence okay so this uh, patterns can be symmetrical although natural features they rarely so symmetry whereas man-made features they are often uh, showing symmetry a unsymmetric or random obviously this is meandering but it is not a uh, systematic okay it is a random meander pattern can be linear curvilinear rectangular circular uh, you can you can just recall some of the rectangular pattern for example if you um, uh, see the fields or the agricultural lands uh, they are basically done in a sectors and those sectors are often in rectangular shapes and even uh, the, the some of the playgrounds they are often in circular patterns so those saps, uh, shapes of the object along with the pattern that 
they show we can just identify the objects that are present on the ground surface there are other patterns such as elliptical parallel centripetal serrated straighted braided okay so here you can see there is also a distinct pattern of you know meandering along with some ox moves. so we are sure that this is basically representing a river coming to the next element it is the association association is again a complex element one of the complex element but it makes our interpretation much easier if we are um, having this ability to find out the association of different objects on the surface of the earth it will definitely help us in better interpreting the imagery now coming to association it is the relative position that an object have with respect to other adjoining objects on the surface of the earth for example from looking at this imagery we can understand that okay this is smooth and this is something like a river okay so here we can say that okay if this is the river area and then this white patches obviously uh, white means higher reflection okay so what can be this features which are white because this is yeah uh, after just understanding the color and the you know the texture we can identify that this is water then what can it be the white patches near the river again i'm saying about this white patches okay this is river then what can it be so we have to use our own understanding of association on the ground we will um, we can identify that by the side of the river we often find some sandbars and sandbars are basically made of sand and they have a higher reflection so obviously this particular white patches can be the sandbars by the bank of the river okay so here we are using our understanding of association of one element with the other because there are we know that sandbars are often associated with the river and since it is it has a high reflection it will be visualized as white patches coming to other important things you can see here it is a linear feature obviously it is a, a very sharp linearity so it is a man made feature it cannot be a natural feature again what is it doing in a river since it is cross secting the river we can just uh, think of something which man can create over the river and it is it has the probability of being a bridge okay since it is strictly straight linear and it is over a river so here also we are using our uh, understanding of association in interpreting the imagery so the spatial association that an object have with the other object in its proximity is basically the association coming to the other imagery you can see this patch is uh, showing a higher reflection it is not white but it's a light gray in color and there are many you know it is very coarse so we can identify this patch as an urban area then what is this which is here so we will just again use our brain and try to guess something which is having a linearity and is near to an urban area so after uh, running our head for some time we can just estimate that this is basically representing the railway station okay there are many parallel you know uh, linearities there is parallel linearities and linear arrangement of many lines in this particular area so this basically is a um railway station okay adjoining to a urban center coming to the next element and it is the shadow 
Now, a sado basically is the result of the height of an object over the surface of the earth and the angle of insulation of the sun and the angle of observation. So, these three things result into the occurrence of shadow in an imagery. It is minimum when the insulation is overhead and the angle of observation is also straight over the head. Again, it is highest in higher objects and when the angle of insulation of, of or the angle of observation is slanting. Here you can see this is a building. Okay, the observation is overhead. So, this building is not showing much displacement. But if we try to observe the shadow, this building has a shadow reaching here. So, this was the main building and the shadow is here. Similarly, here is the building and its shadow is reaching over here. So basically this building has a height and that's why this shadow is this much and other thing is that the uh, angle of insulation is uh, the sun is somewhere here the angle of insulation is in this direction so this too has resulted in uh, this shadow effect and this shadow basically indicate that the object has a height similarly here you can see uh, these are basically some folds and here this is uh, a lighter uh, color or texture you can see and here there is a darker uh, color and this basically represent the leeward side and this was the forward side the insulation is uh, striking in this side and here there is no insulation so this is this all the uh, features have one side shadowed and other side as clear form shadow so from this we can see that okay this has some height there is a variation of height and since uh, and understanding the pattern of this their arrangement we can say that okay this is a mountain system okay there are there is folded mountain system here so this is how we use the understanding of shadow in image interpretation coming to this imagery this is again a google out imagery you can see there are houses here this one and this one and you can see small uh, shadows are there okay this is the shadowed area of this house and similarly this house is there and there is a shadow the basic shadow indicates that there is a height of these features okay so this is very much useful in interpreting objects over the image coming to the site and situation site of an object on the ground with respect to elevation slope aspect exposure adjacency to water transportation and utilize utilities uh, can be stayed as site coming to this picture you can see um, it was the part it is the extension of the earlier imagery you can see there are folded mountain systems then there are so many rivers because uh, watching the pattern of their flow we can see that these are rivers there is meandering pattern okay and there is some you know greenery so we can just uh, use our brain and find this uh, the, and uh, try to interpret this then we will come to analyze that this portion is basically a mountainous area and this is the foothills that is dividing the mountains from the plains and this is a plain area so you can just use all of these elements together for interpretation of the imagery coming to the situation situation is the placement of an object on the surface of the earth with respect to other adjoining features uh, it can be natural as well as man-made okay Coming to again here, you can see same thing, association, situation and sites are often uh, studied in as a single unit. In many of the books, they are often given as single, single unit. Here also you can see the white patch is basically a sand dune or you can say a sandbar. 
Okay, so since this is a river and it's, it is um, somewhere in between the uh, bank of the river, so the most probable um, result of this white patch is that they are the sand deposits than by the river. Okay, then here you can see there are uh, meandering pattern and some there are black spots. So we can just easily um, understand because they are located to the proximity of a river. We can just uh, interpret them as the wetlands. Okay, this one is a wetland because there is a river. You can see this meandering pattern basically represent rivers. And since there are there is much meander, and there are some black patches. This one is a black patch. You can see here, here also. So this black patch is basically are indicative that these are the wetlands associated with the rivers. Even this white patch represent the uh, bank of the river. So we can use this association, site, and situation for better understanding and interpretation of our imagery. So these are the elements that we have to focus on uh, visual image interpretation. So what? let us revise them. They are location and scale, tone or color, size, shape, texture, shadow, pattern, association, site and situation. So these are the elements that we have to observe and use for visual image interpretation. Again, always remember that the quality of the interpretation is very much dependent on the experience that uh, interpreter or analyst has because over time it the quality of interpretation increases and a uh, person become better interpreter as it get experience. With this, I'm concluding. Thank you.